So the scripture reading today is a bit of a doozy. I didn't pick it. This is the adventure of using a lectionary, a prescribed set of readings. You just never quite know what you're going to get. Well, that's not entirely true. Actually, the readings are set out a year in advance, but there's no way while it was being put together, or even when I was perusing it last fall, that anyone could have predicted that the Sunday we'd be in the middle of a global pandemic under a state of emergency at every level of government, that we would also have a reading about the apocalypse. Funny how that happens, huh? So where are we? In the Gospel of Mark, we're in the week leading up to Jesus' death. When I read this in that context, I imagine Jesus kind of edgy, a little agitated, full of that sort of nervous and frustrated energy you get when you're just waiting for something awful. You come off really harsh to the people who are nearest and dearest to you, even a bit grouchy. Maybe like the days leading up to an important surgery or a performance review or a concert. There's no turning back now. You've just got to go through with it. Your mind is racing. Your stomach is permanently flipped. Equal parts terrified and let's just get this over with. So without further ado, let's pray. Life-giving God, steady us with your spirit. Create deep inner peace within us so that we may attend to your words of hope and promise for the sake of Christ, your living word. Amen. So we're in Mark chapter 13. I have no idea what page that is in your Bible at home. So you're welcome to turn there or listen along Mark 13, the first eight verses. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. And Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone is going to be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was, when he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell, tell us, Lord, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. And then moving to verse 24, to the end of the chapter. But in those days, after that suffering, this is Jesus still talking. He says, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the son, but only the father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.